that's 39 degrees, 82 percent humidity, and it's higher than that. It's been raining really most of the morning. And re remember that Tony Franklin, the barefooted man, has a barefooted kick. His kickoffs sometimes are short. Mike Nelms at the 15-yard line for the Redskins. Out to the 24-yard line and dumped hard there. Good coverage as Greg Brown goes under to make the tackle. A short kickoff to a very, very dangerous receiver. Joe Theismann, the quarterback. Six touchdowns, no interceptions. Big John Riggins, Art Monk, one of the great receivers right now in football. Charlie Brown, Mr. Explosive. Don Warren, the very steady tight end. Williams, Jacoby, Grimm, Bostic, and May call the Hogs. A good, improving offensive line. George Stark in there, too. Monk in motion on first down. Reverse motion. Hand off to John Riggins. The remaining back gets over the 25-yard line to the 26. Franklin Master making his first tackle. The defense for the Eagles has been worked over in the first three games of 82. Dennis Harrison, Kenny Clark at the nose, and Carl Harrison, who played very well against Cincinnati. The linebacking a little bit changed. John Bunny normally out there right. Reggie Wilkes at the right side for his second start. Jerry Robinson left inside. LeMaster always at right inside. Young Edwards, Logan, and Wilson the secondary. Bernard Wilson back after missing last week's game. Second down call. Warren to the 37-yard line. And a, looks like enough for a first down. Boy, Theismann is really cool. He looks so confident now this year. Uh, he's so used to the system with Joe Gibbs. We've noticed in practice uh, that he's real loose, releasing the ball as quickly as he ever has. That one just a little out pattern to the tight end, Warren, who is their solid, dependable 10-yard receiver. And the two tight end offense really does tie down a 3-4 defense, doesn't it? You bet it does. It oh. takes a lot of the linebacker action away, and we'll develop that as we go along. Well, the numbers on Joe Theismann. No, no interception so far this year. There's John Riggins, almost to midfield of the 49. Bernard Wilson having to make the tackle and having to take a ride to do it. Rookie, part of the thing that we talked about was with two tight ends, you have two tight ends on the line. The weak side linebacker who can normally fill in on plays like that is up on the line of scrimmage battling that tight end. So instead of making it a 3-4, it basically makes it a 5-2. Jacoby, the big... Uh, Second year offensive tackle is 295. Usually those kind of tackles are on the strong side of the right side, but he's at the left side where Riggins ran behind them. Another first down, two in a row. Theismann looking for a screen. He has Riggins. Riggins gets a good block to the Eagle 39 yard line. Jerry Robinson making his second tackle. Great screen that time by the Redskins, and we'll take a look at it from our end zone camera. Now watch Theismann. The longer you can hold the screen, the better. Play action held a little. The Redskins get out late, and all three of them come out up there on their feet. Riggins cuts it back inside for good yardage. Looked like they caught the Eagles maybe shifting into a little stunt situation, and they got caught, huh? Gibbs took over this team, and after going 0-5 last year, they won 11 of their last 15 games. Monk was in motion. Oh, no gain this time. Hit hard at the 40-yard line by Jerry Robinson. Robinson moved inside to, to use that great athletic ability that he has to make more tackles, become more of a factor. Dick Vermeil thought that he might be the key to the defense, playing the right outside linebacker last year, moving him inside just last week, and he responded with 10 tackles. He definitely feels that Robinson is uh, the best athlete, the best football player on his defense. He once ran a 9-700 in high school and said he was cheated out of the first place medal. I don't know what the winner must have run. Three first downs in a row. It's a second down and ten facing Theismann. Reverse out by Joe Theismann. Seven. Completion to Charlie Brown for 25. Boy, Herm Edwards was a long way off Charlie Brown. Plan play. It, it looked like a rollout that, that perhaps wasn't played, but that's not the case. Theismann wanted to get out right away, even had a blocker in front of him. Charlie Brown, number 87, the wide receiver who has added a lot of punch to this ball club. He has caught a touchdown pass every game this year. Herman Edwards playing way off him, respecting his speed. Brown runs a comeback. Theismann on the rollout, cuts the field in half and gets it right on the money. Remember, Brown's the one that had the big day against the Eagles, remember, in the opening game. 
He's a little guy, but he can jump right out of the stadium. Here's Monk in motion. Another first down. Ricketts on his weak side. Caught by Randy Logan and knocked back to the 30-yard line. Good play by the tight safety man, Logan. Excellent play. A lot of times uh, with a double tight end offense, the quarterback Theisman will call a play in the huddle, but it can be run to either side. He'll come up and check which way the strong safety Logan is playing and then run the other way. That time they ran it into the power, and uh, Logan number 41, along with Reggie Wilkes, made the stop. Big play facing Joe Theisman right now. There's Reggie at 238 pounds, a lot bigger really than Jerry Robinson for the outside. Well, he played behind John Bunning over on the left side, but they've moved him to the right now with Robinson going in the middle to get some playing time, and, and he had a good game last week. Theisman is 3 of 3 for 35. This is second down and 14. Theisman is spinning to the right. Overthrown, almost intercepted. Maybe it is intercepted. Roynell Young gets his second interception of the year. A diving catch of a spike ball by the tight end. Or was that Art Muck? It may have been Muck. That was a great catch by Roynell Young. A diving one-handed catch with a slippery football. Again, that's that little dash play we talked about before. Theismann starts out like he's going to straight drop back and then kind of rolls out about halfway to the right. Had the receiver open, just threw it high. Ronell Young stops the Redskins, but we're early in the rain. 96 straight passes. The first one of the year, and that includes a few passes he threw last year. So there's that fake straight drop back and then a rollout. You see the guard out in front. There's the throw intended for 81 Monk. Art he was Monk. there, but it was thrown a little bit too high and a great diving catch by Young. Ronell really drove for the ball. Two tight ends in, Vito Cobb and Spagnola. The Penn State rookies in there, too. Jaworski to Harrington. Harrington to the 13-yard line. Here's the offense. Ron Jaworski having a great year himself at quarterback. Jamon is not in there. Harrington is the lone remaining back. Carmichael, Ron Smith, and as we said, the two tight ends, Vito, Cab, and Spagnola. There's the offensive line, Walters, Kenny, Guy Morris, Ron Baker, and Jerry Sizemore. Second down and six, call it, on the 13. The draw for Harrington, Harrington to about the 17-yard line. Dave Butts makes the tackle. Here's the Washington defense. Remember, they don't see four threes very often around this league. And the Redskins play it. Mendenhall, Dave Butts, the Giant in their tackle. Perry Brooks and Dexter Manley, who has four sacks. Very active defensive end. Kaufman starting his first game at left. Okowitz in the middle and Rich Mullot of Penn State at right. The secondary, Jarris White, the rookie, Vernon Dean, the Redskins' number one draft. Tony Peters and Mark Murphy, the two veteran safety men. Jaworski on third and three. Shotgun. Outside, going for Ron Smith makes a jumping grab for it. Jarris White was there, but it looked catchable. Second week in a row that uh, Jaworski's first pass, which uh, could have been a completion, has been dropped. Ron Smith had two drops last, last week against Cincinnati early in the ball game. Jaworski right on target. Dick Vermeil said that Jaworski seemed to be throwing better the later portion of this week than he had since they came back off the strike. Very dangerous punt return man faces Max Rutherford. Rutherford, the young man from South, young man from South Carolina, a very fine kicker. But Nelms is very, very dangerous. Remember a year ago he went 52 against the 49ers, who a pretty good football team. Here's a good hanging punt by Rutherford. Nelms at the 38. Hit and dropped immediately by number 24. Ray Ellis down under the covers. The Redskins have the ball. Ties with his first interception. 8.52 left. These are the shirts that he has on those, I mean, the offensive line coach. These are the, the shirts on that offensive line, but they call themselves the Hogs, and he's the boss hog. A really young group uh, and, and a very good one. They may be the fastest and maybe perhaps the best developing young offensive line in football. Only a real veteran there is Stark. Of course, the Columbian has been there a while. Jacoby and all the rest of them are second-year men. The fake by Theismann going right to the outside and knocked away. Almost intercepted by Roynell Young again. The quick out by Joe Theismann trying to get it to Charlie Brown.
Dick Vermeil felt that a, a key situation against Eisman in that first game was the fact that his corners didn't play all that well. Of course not with uh, rather with, with Eisman getting uh, over 300 yards 370 some yards. Today two good plays already by Roy Nell Young at one corner Herman Edwards on the other. Harmon is in now and Riggins is out. Here comes Charlie Brown in motion in a hurry. Eisman being rushed with the blitz. Dumped off to Harmon. Harmon picks up a couple of yards. Let's go to New York City right now for Brent Musburger and the NFL Today in an update. Rookie, another weapon for the Green Bay Packers. They have Lofton and Jefferson, now a 12th round choice out of TCU. Epps, who catches this touchdown pass from Dickey, and the Packers strike first. They lead the Jets 6-0. The extra point hit the upright. Back to Brookie in Washington. Packers are still unblemished, as they say in this league. That's pretty tough to do. Thighs with his four of six for 37 yards. Two backs in the backfield now. Thiesman going across the middle. That's Jaquinto. Jaquinto down to the 33-yard line. Good throw by Joe Thiesman. Almost like Thiesman did. Looked back into that nickel coverage of the secondary of the Philadelphia Eagles and knew what it was going to be, knew what they were going to rotate to because he got Jaquinto on the linebacker. Jerry Robinson immediately didn't look anywhere else. Robinson was behind about a step, couldn't get his head and eyes around to look for the football, and Jaquinto took it in stride. Look at Theismann here looking all the way to the left side. That's Jaquinto working against Robinson. There it is right there. If he'd have turned around with his head and eyes, he may have been able to get a hand up on the football. A 28-yard completion. And Jerry Robinson has the speed, but that is the new position. Monk is in motion. Here's the fake as Monk's trying to go up. Now he dumps it to Warren. Theismann gets the completion inside the Eagle 30. This is going to be a physical game. I can see people shoving already. Already. That time he wanted to go deep off the flag. He flagged uh, Art Monk, wanted him to go deep on Randy Logan. But Logan was in good shape on him, so he had to dump it off short. Remember Robinson told us yet last night that he thought that it was a little more difficult playing pass defense outside than inside. Well, and he felt that that was the toughest adjustment for him to make when he went in the middle was his pass drop. And it showed perhaps on that, uh, the play just before this last one on the uh, catch by Jaquinto. There's Jaquinto obtained on waivers from Miami. All the pieces seem to fit the puzzle and Gibbs has really put together a, a very sound offense. The guys look very comfortable with it. Rookie, he has a lot of role players, a lot of guys that come in and play specialty teams and do special things for his offense, and it's still scoreless. Theismann, he's 6 of 8 for 72 yards. No score yet. 6.37 left in the first period. A rainy, drizzly day in the nation's capital. Second down and three. A misdirection, and Rickens is trapped behind the line of scrimmage by Kenny Clark. Be a loss of a couple. They were trying to run a tackle trap that time and run that big tackle Joe Bostic down on Clark, but he just beat him through. Number 71, who has taken over the nose tackle position from Charlie Johnson. Watch on the far left of your screen in white. See Jacoby, number 66, come down and try for the tackle trap, but Clark was too quick for him across the line of scrimmage. Joe Washington's in the backfield now. Little Joe obtained from Baltimore. A very fine pass receiver. He had Harmon. There goes Harmon in motion. Thyssen's been rushed. He's going to run with it. Oh, hit hard by Jerry Robinson. A great tackle by Jerry Robinson. And Thyssen is a, a real good ball carrier. He's as good as some halfbacks. Rookie has gained over 1,000 yards as his NFL career on the ground. Where you see Robinson, who made the hit, made his drop and came back up on Thyssen's scramble. Mosley now. Here. Mosley, who is perfect in field goals attempted. He's 8 of 8. And of course, we know the two dramatic ones he hit against the Eagles. He's got 11 straight over two years. He hit the final three last season. Theismann holding from the 35, so it's a 45-yard field goal attempt. It's down. Looks pretty good. It's good. Theismann calling for roughing, but the Eagles trail 3-0 with 5-14 left in the first period. The Redskins were arguing that Mark Mosley was rocked, but there was no flag, and the 45-yarder is good. That's Billy Campfield. Campfield hurdles to the 27-yard line. Wansley making the tackle on special teams for the Redskins. It's
it's baskets time. Don't forget, next Saturday, the NCAA basketball on CBS comes back with two top ten rated teams. It's going to be the Wildcat battle as Kentucky and their Wildcats meet Villanova and the Villanova Wildcats. Gary Bender and Billy Packer will bring you all the action from Rupp Auditorium in Lexington, Kentucky. Next Saturday, following the Army-Navy game, tip-off, 4 o'clock Eastern time on CBS Sports. Kentucky Wildcats and Villanova. First and ten now for the Eagles. Jaworski, long calling. Harrington ducks inside, gets just over the 30. Running at Dexter Manley, but not picking up much. Straight ahead stuff. Stan Walter is working against Dexter Manley over on the left side. I'm surprised, Brookie, that they haven't come back over and run against the left side of the Washington Redskins uh, defense so far. Mel Kaufman, number 55, is making the start there in place of Monty Coleman. Kaufman, a second-year player, started six games last year, but that was because of injuries. Coaches uh, say that uh, he's the kind of player that uh, plays better in games than he does in practice. He's only about 215 pounds, and uh, I'm sure the Eagles will test him before the afternoon's out. The Eagles are not rushing the football as they did the past several seasons. It's a drop back pass on second down and five. Jaworski, oh, it's Magnola, who hits about the 40-yard line. He's hit by number 23, Tony Peters, and they're going to call it an incomplete pass. But Spagnola really got stuck. Peter is a strong safety. Now, Joe Gibbs has talked to his secondary. He said one of the talks that he had with parts of his ball club before the season started was to talk to his defensive secondary and say, we need more hitting from the defensive backs, in particular <laughs> corners. Well, Tony Peter is a safety. Got the message, too. Look at this shot on Spagnola right oh. after the catch. It brings him off the football. Lom Lombardi, Lombardi said dancing is a contact game and football is a hitting game, right? This is hitting. Shotgun on third down and five. Jaworski hitting Harold Carmichael and knocked away. There is a flag down on the field. Let's see what the call is. Carmichael did not hold on. Working against Rich Malott, number Rich 57. Malott. The outside linebacker, Jaw spotted it perfectly. The fact that he had Carmichael on a linebacker. Harold turned back, leaped to try to make the catch. It's against the Redskins. Looks like Jaworski is getting time to throw, even though he hasn't completed the pass yet. He's getting a lot of good protection from his offensive line. Has had people open. Defense encroachment, number 72 line up in the neutral zone. 72. It's Dexter Manley who lined up in the neutral zone. Green Bay and the Jets are tied in the first quarter. 6-6. Six, six. Extra points are hard to come by, huh? Third down and a foot. Eagles unable to get anything going yet. This is Leroy Harris. The fullback gets out to the 40. Enough for the first down. The first one for the Eagles so far today. We talked about the Redskins having specialty players. You're looking at Leroy Harris, number 20 for the Eagles. He's the same kind of guy. Comes in in the tough yardage situations, either as a blocker or a ball carrier. And that time they ran towards the left side. The Mel Kaufman, there's number 55. He was a free agent long shot last year. He made the team because of injuries. And when they threw him in there to play, he performed extremely well. 3.38 left in the first period. A 3-0 Washington lead. Perry Harrington in the backfield. Jamona in the backfield. Jamona, now Jaworski's going deep. Knocked away from Ronnie Smith. Knocked away from Ronnie Smith by Vernon Dean, the rookie from San Diego State. Jaworski just let it go that time, rookie. He knew there's no way that he could overthrow Ron Smith. Good protection again. Play action fake. Held the linebackers, but not going to do anything to the cornerbacks. Number 32 is Vernon Dean, a youngster who is starting in front of Joe Lavender now for the Redskins. And you just don't play it any better than this. It's the moment of truth. A great play by the rookie, and he will be tested today. Vernon Dean. That's where Bird Lavender has played so long and so well for Washington, and he's watching the rookie break in. Second down and 10. Balls in the 39. The blitz is up. Jaworski recovered by Jaworski. Guy Morris checking to see if it was the snap or maybe there was a little mud on the hand of one of the other. Ball's going to be wet right now, Tom, because it's, it's raining harder right here 
at this minute than it has all morning, all afternoon in Washington. I wondered if Jaworski's pass slipped on the lawn when he tried to throw to Ron Smith. A lot. And they've allowed more points than, of course, they've done in a long time. Mike Quick, the number one draft choice, is in for the Eagles. He's going to get the ball and slam. And Jarris White knocks the ball away from number 82, Mike Quick. Jaworski had to throw it very quickly that time, Tom. They came with a safety blitz. The Redskins did. Mark Murphy coming up the gap in the middle. Jaworski had to throw the inside and release right away. Ron Jaworski having a tough time after the strike, the break of some eight games and eight weeks of getting the timing back with his receivers. He was number one in the NFC after two weeks. Mike Nelms, number 21, waiting for Runnaker's punt. They're going to set up a return. Away from Nelms, Runnaker's trying to get it on the left sidelines. Nelms doesn't fair catch many. He's, he's wrestled out of bounds about the 23-yard line. And the Redskins have the football again with 2.35 left in the first period. Mosley's 45-yard field goal, the only markers on the board. It's going to be tough. It's not your basic warm rain either. It's a little chilly here in Washington, D.C., but these people coming out for the home opener <laughs> in November, and there are not a whole lot of no-shows here. Yeah, I didn't feel much bitterness about the strike here at all. Of course, the team opened on the road last week, too. The Eagles had to open at Bet Stadium. Here's Riggins taking it to the right side, out to the 27-yard line. I was surprised at the size of John Riggins in the dressing room yesterday. I watched him play from up here for years, but he's his biggest offensive guard. He, looked, he almost looked like a guard, didn't he, yesterday? And just that run right there pointed out his strength and his power. He gained about three yards after he was initially hit. He worked on weights this year in the offseason for the first time in his career, and they said it was really helped him, even helped his quickness. He is an honorary member of the Hogs, the offensive <laughs> lineman. He's the only other guy on the team they gave a T-shirt to because they like the way he gets after the tough yardage. He's got 12 yards on six carries so far today, one of those Hogs. Here's the Hog again, 44. And he is 235 pounds. Randy Logan making another tackle. Dick Vermeil said that he thought the last half of the Cincinnati game, the Eagle defense under Marion Campbell and all, began to look like the one that was the best in football the last four years on allowing points. They began to beat on people. Well, don't you think that he spread the message this week a little bit to that defense? Uh, even before the game today, uh, while the Eagles were having their pregame warm-ups, he went around to every member of his team and had a, a private word with him. I noticed that, yeah. It was a very, either a sensitive moment or a threatening moment. I couldn't tell which. And maybe said, I'm taking names and numbers. <laughs> in motion, go see across the middle, heading for Harmon. Catch. Harmon may be knocked out, but now running with the ball is John Shara. Shara's come up with it. They're going to call it incomplete, and Harmon is still down. He was really drilled after making a great catch at the 43-yard line. They're going to call it a catch. Shara may have stolen the ball when Harmon hit the deck. Heisman almost went to the the same play that he ran before Bricky. Perhaps it was the same play with Jaquinto, this time with Harmon carrying. Again, he had him on Robinson, the linebacker, but Robinson got some safety help that time. See it from the end zone shot, and you'll see Harmon, who is a, a possession-type receiver for the, the Redskins, come out of the backfield, and he'll be running against number 56, the in, inside linebacker Jerry Robinson. A stun up front that's picked up well by the Redskins. Theismann with plenty of time. There's the linebacker again. He makes a strip and then gets some help from John Shara, the safety who came over and really knocked the ball loose. Now, we still haven't gotten a determination whether the catch was good or they're going to call it an incomplete pass. It looks like it's going to be called an incomplete pass, and young Hayes will have to come in perhaps and kick on fourth down. But right now, we're worried about the man you're looking at on the field, Clarence Herman. One of the real unsung players around the league who always does a good job, and nobody seems to know much about him. And he's carried nine times for 62 yards this year already, Brookie, and that's that's over. That's almost seven yards a carry for him. There he is. Came in in a couple of punch situations in the first ball game against the Eagles on third down, made some good catches in that one in that opening ball game. Good player, six years out of Mississippi State. They like.
like to throw to him. He caught 12 uh, passes one game from Theismann in a game a couple years ago. First, first punt by the Redskins. This is young Hayes out of North Carolina, a good athlete, and gets tremendous hang time on a normal afternoon. Let's see what the rain does to the young man. Wally Henry waiting for the ball. It's just an average kick. Henry at the Eagle 40 lets it bounce at the 42-yard line. Redskins cover it. Good field position for the Eagles. 58 seconds left. Let's go to Green Bay. Dead even. And, of course, it's division and conference against conference now. There will only be eight teams in the playoffs in each conference. And the Eagles must win this football game. The lone back is Harrington. Jaworski going quickly to the outside. It's going to be called incomplete. Incomplete pass. Jamona was trying to make the catch in the left flat. And I believe Vernon Dean picked it up just to give the crowd something to get out from underneath their slickers about. Malad out there, number 57, makes a hit. Watch 32 Vernon Dean, the rookie cornerback, dive for this football. It hits the ground. Good call. He picked it up and ran with it. Maybe it counts out of San Diego State. They do throw it around a bit in that league, don't they? Jaworski is 0 for 5. And some of that's because the Redskins are really hitting the receivers. Spagnuolo's been hit, and Louis Jamona was really hit. There's number 7. Two years ago, he won the Burt Bell Award at the Maxwell Club. The blitz is on. The blitz has him, and Jaworski sacked. The Redskins have sacked Jaworski back to the 31. It's a tough little middle linebacker, Olkowitz, in on the blitz for his second sack of the season. The Redskins sacked Jaworski six times in game number one. And last year, the Eagles only were sacked 22 times the whole season. And 10 already this, as you saw. There's Olkowitz. The strike is gone, but it's not really forgotten, is it? Uh, eight weeks of losing it. There's still some lingering things about the strike, don't you think? Oh, they definitely are. The, the, I think the coaches perhaps feel it more than the players do, Brookie. They just know that their players aren't the same people after that kind of layoff. The rush, Jaworski throwing, going for Mike Quick, who makes the catch. Jarris White and Mike Quick both have the ball. They're going to call it an interception as Jarris White is called for getting the interception. Usually the tie goes to the receiver this time. They gave it to the defender. I think because the defender had possession originally first on the play. But Tom, you know, theoretically, when you look at it, uh, that, that kind of interception doesn't hurt Jaworski. It's as good as a punt on, on fourth down. But the catch would have put the Eagles in pretty good position with uh, Tony Franklin's leg on the bench. He put it up there where he had a chance. This is a pretty good throw and a good effort by Smith, but it's not to be. And good coverage by Jarris White. He had the inside taken away, didn't he? Big INT. Jaworski still has not found the mark yet. He will. Number seven back. Throws to the outside. Tended for Don Warren, the tight end who was just a safety valve. Wonder who he wanted to. He wanted to go to Art Monk, I believe, that time on a corner pattern. We did too. He play action fake that time. Very good selection on first down for the Redskins and Joe Theismann. They have thrown three times on first down so far in the ball game. He sure has matured, hasn't he? He says when the Redskins win, he sells a lot of cameras too, you know? <laughs> Six of ten for 72 yards for Joe Theismann. A lot of time, Theismann unloads it out. This is Harmon again. He's back in the game out over the 36-yard line to the 37. And Carl Harrison had to catch him from behind. It's 3-0. They're battling in the rain, and that's the end of the first quarter. K Stadium, a, a sold-out crowd that sort of moved back under the uh, overhang to get away from the rain. But there are a lot of bumper shoots and raincoats and what have you, slickers. And 
Uh, this is a pretty good football town, and right now the Redskins are hot. They lead 3-0 after one quarter, and Theismann has been the gunner. Here's the reverse. The reverse to number 88, Rick Walker. Ricky Walker out of UCLA, and he picks up about five yards. John Bunny making his first tackle of the afternoon. Well, not too bad a play that time by Randy Logan, the strong safety, too. They kicked out on him with that with that big May, that big lineman, and he hung in there pretty well. Remember when Vermeer was talking about Walker at, at UCLA? He was one of his stars that helped up upset Ohio State in that Rose Bowl. Vermeer said that he was sitting in a dentist chair one day, and his dentist told him about, <laughs> about the tight end Walker as we look at Logan. <laughs> and so that's how he recruited uh, Walker at UCLA through his dentist. I hope he filled his teeth correctly. I, at least he got him a good tight end out there. Theismann back to throw. Quickly going across the middle to Warren. Warren has it in Eagle territory. Warren's their dependable tight end, Tommy. He doesn't have the speed, the foot speed of, of the other three. We're talking about Williams and Walker and Didier, but he's probably the best blocker of the bunch. He's in his fourth year in the NFL from San Diego State, and they say if you get the ball near him, he's going to catch it. He doesn't drop anything. And a pretty good blocker, too. You know, the all-around tight end. Uh, actually, uh, Gibbs has moving tight ends, guys that are good motion people, but number 85 is pretty solid all the way. Theismann, 8 of 12. A 3-0 lead. Here's the handoff. The reverse left the fleet back. He's going all the way this time for Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown catches it at the three-yard line. Jumps over Roydell Young. And Charlie Brown made a tremendous catch. scored in every game this year for the Washington Redskins. He had two touchdowns against the Eagles in the opening game. Off the flea flicker this time. Charlie Brown also has the highest vertical leap of anybody on the Washington Redskins, and you'll see him jump over Roy Nell Young here and just practically take the football away from him. Young played it extremely well. Brown just got it with his athletic ability. A great throw, too, and a pretty good play where they faked the reverse and then flea flicker, gave it back to Theismann, who completed a 45-yarder, and there's some high fives on the Redskins' sidelines. It's first and goal. Motion is bunk. It's Theismann throwing. Intercepted by Jerry Robinson. A tremendous play by number 56. Robinson has the ball for the Eagles, and he caught it like he had a first base glove on. One of the reasons Dick Vermeil put Robinson in the middle was so he could play the whole field. He felt that when he was playing the outside linebacker spot on the right-hand side, he was cutting the field in half for Robinson to cover. Number 56 this time. Here's the rollout by Theismann. The throw. And I'll tell you, that's a hard ball to catch. <laughs> Excitement in the second period. It's still 3 to And, of course, the first interceptions of, of the year for Joe Theismann. Can't believe he didn't give the ball to number 44, Riggins, one time with first and goal. But anyway, the Eagles had the football. Jaworski having trouble getting the aerial game going. Jaworski going straight across the middle. Hits Carmichael. Carmichael has it at the 26. Vernon Dean, the rookie, who's giving away a few inches in height. Vern's got to be about 5, 9 and a half or 10. And Harold, of course, is 6 foot 8, going on 6 foot 9. Play action again that time by Jaworski, and a good job up front by the offensive line. It wasn't real pass protection blocking. They fired out to keep the skins' his hands down so Jaworski could fire that inside pattern into Carmichael. Carmichael's been with the Eagles since 1971. You can count him, folks. That's a lot of years of getting hit. He's been a great receiver. Inside to Harrington. Perry Harrington at the 27-yard line. Not much. A couple of scores elsewhere. The fur is flying, too. As Harrington goes back to the huddle. Chicago leading Minnesota 7-0. Ditka's found the secret of eternal youth. The Bears leading in the second. Green Bay and the Jets all tied. No extra points in that game. And St. Louis banging Atlanta 14-3 in the second quarter. Young Lomax must be playing well. New England over Houston. That's in the second period. Back here, it's 3-0. Jaworski being rushed, throws, overthrows Harrington in the flat, and Harrington got hit anyway. As Olkowitz came out from his middle linebacking spot and drilled the receiver just to make sure. I think an 
interesting what Dick Vermeil told us, Tom, about Jaworski. He felt that he is not a natural thrower, not a natural thrower. He's the kind of guy that has to work on the passing game and have a lot of repetition. And he felt the strike perhaps hurt Jaws as much as it uh, hurt anyone on his ball club. Said he wasn't like any use Sonny Jurgens, for an example, a guy that could pick up the ball uh, any time of the year and, and, yeah. uh, and, and throw completions. That figures. Here it is on shotgun on third down and eight. Got good blocking this time. Just dumping it out in the flat. It's mishandled a little bit by Jamona. Louis Jamona couldn't hang on at the 30. And Runniger comes back on the field. Jaworski is now one of nine. Redskins with a blitz on that time. Rich Malott, the weak side linebacker, came in. Picked up well by the Eagles. But good coverage downfield. And Jaworski really didn't have a target. It's lookout time for that coverage team because Mike Nelms now could put the Redskins in pretty good position if he could handle Runniger's punt cleanly. A 46-yard average for Maxi Runniger so far for the Eagles, and he's been busy. There's Nelms. Very dangerous indeed. This is an average kick, but it may turn out extremely well. Bounces to the 33, and Nelms sort of slides into the kick position to the 35. Tempers flare. Three nothing. A Mosley 45 yard field goal. And some big INTs. Hang close. Sharon Walker down at Washington, D.C. And it was a beautiful day yesterday for workouts and all, but it's been raining most of the morning. And this is a natural grass turf. This is not anything artificial. It may get a little bit slimy before we're through. First and 10, Washington. Riggins running outside left. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Great play by LeMaster and Carl Harrison. Over the last four years, the Eagle defense has led the entire NFL in points allowed, which is the only way you can decide, really, the ultimate defensive ball club. They have been superb. But they've had a ragged start. As we mentioned at the top of the telecast, that was Dick Vermeule's primary concern, and his number one objective was to get a good game out of the defense here this afternoon. Second down and still 10. Eagles trying to exert their pressure through the defense at this stage. It's still raining. Walker on reverse motion. Spread out right by Thyssen. Going deep for Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown behind Roy Young for the score. like a takeoff he ran on Ronell Young. It looked like he uh, may have turned it up, tried to get him to bite on a short pattern, and then continued on downfield. But Charlie Brown now continues his streak. He has scored in every Redskin game this season. South Carolina a and T. I'll tell you one thing, they've got an Alumnus that can catch the football. Nine yards, two plays. Mosley's field goal, a part of the extra point attempt, is good. Ben Bright has his hands up, and the Redskins came back and got it. Watch this is called a dash now. Theismann starts straight back and then will dash out to the right with protection in front. See the lineman. There's the flag right there on that short pattern that Brown run. Now he's going deep. His coach Joe Gibbs says he's a glider. He runs 4-5, but if you look at him, looks like he's running 4-8. He also says he's a gamer. He plays his best in the games. Doesn't leave it on the practice field. That's the case today. I'm uh, injured a year ago. Remember, they knew, they knew he was going to be a great player. Some kind of a pass catch that time. Jeff Hayes now is kicking off. Mosley doesn't have to kick off any longer as Hayes takes that at the five-yard line. Wally Henry. Henry out to the 34-yard line. The flags are down. The rain is coming down also and harder and colder. And the lights are on. Eagles trail 10-0. A 45-yard field goal and a tremendous pass play. From Theismann to Charlie Brown. What are Theismann's stats over there now? He's 10 of 15 for 204 yards, two interceptions, and one TD. And we're only halfway through uh, the second quarter. There's ben Dreith, the referee, is marking it off against the Redskins. Five-yard face mask 
on Washington, five yards. Five yards for grabbing equipment. The Redskin defense doesn't have any big names, but I'll tell you, they play pretty good football. And out of the 4 3 defense, over one time and under the next. That's Harrington shifting. Straight drop back, three steps. That's Ron Smith with his first catch. Smith to the 47 yard line. Jarris White hanging on. Getting number 81 turned on. It could light the fire. They said he went back out to the West Coast during the strike and played drums but didn't play catch. Sometimes that makes you not a very good receiver when you get back to work. When you look at the other side, and Theismann is 10 of 15, and uh, Joe Gibbs said that during the strike he was able to, to keep his passing game together. Theismann worked out practically daily with all the receivers on the Redskin Ball Club. Good That's point. Good point, Wayne, and most of them stayed close. Cincinnati, leading Oakland, 14 to 10. Those two teams that have both been to the Super Bowl in the last couple of years. Here's the pitch back to Harrington. Malott, the Penn State linebacker, pulls him down from behind. Good defensive play. Rich Malott played his blocker and made the tackle after about a yard gain. Excellent play by number 57 on that toss. Now, Vermeil said that that Harrington has improved his running because he used to, when he was a young man, try to get outside, try yeah. to get to the sideline every play, and he's learned to cut back. That time he had no choice as Malott just strung it out perfectly and kept in good shape and, and hung him up out there. You're the only linebacker I've ever known that didn't come from Penn State. <laughs> just you know, about, isn't it? Gosh, they must have 16 guys playing. He played about six positions for Joe Paterno up at State College anyway. And not a linebacker. Billy Campbell in motion on shotgun. Third down. Jaworski's going to run for it. Jaworski is being chased by Perry Brooks, and the first down goes to the Eagle quarterback. Flags are down. Again, tempers just a little bit on the edgy side. Pretty good protection that time, Tom, by, uh, by the Eagles up in front. That was just good coverage downfield, and Jaworski had no place to go before Dexter Manley showed up. A little unsportsmanlike there, huh? a feeling that this weekend everybody would be more serious about hitting one another. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 69 on the defense. First down. Perry Brooks chasing Jaworski must have done something awful right at the Redskin bench. He's a nice guy. He was okay at the dance, right? Nice, nice to us. <laughs> Jaworski picks up additional yardage plus a big gutsy first down. Laid it on the Colts. Everybody does. It's a 10 0 shutout in the second. Jaworski, only two completions. Knocked away. It's Tony Peters motioning that he should have gone the other way for a touchdown. Peters with his second excellent play of the afternoon. He was. Tony Peters was talking about the uh, Oklahoma-Nebraska game. I guess everybody follows their own colleges. He's from Oklahoma. A little disappointed. Chicago still leading Minnesota. Not yet at halftime. That was a good college football game, wasn't it? This is a good one we've got right here. It's 10-0. Eagles look like they've got something going. Spike Nolan motion. Jaworski being rushed. Flipped it for Ronnie Smith who is knocked away by Jarris White. There are no flags. Looked like that ball was sort of slimy and hung up there a little bit. And plus the fact that the Redskins, Tom, and almost every sure passing down are blitzing. They brought people again that time. Jaworski with really not all the time you wanted on this play. You'll see Olkowitz, number 52, coming from up the middle. Malott was coming from the left side. There's some pressure. He has to release before he wants to. there for the ball. Jarris White, number 45, making the defensive play. Good secondary play. Jarris White, boy, that's a tough place to be. You're out there all by yourself. Third down and 10. This is a big one for the Eagles. Shotgun. Jaworski going outside and slipping and falling down is Mike Quick. The Eagles' number one draft choice out of North Carolina State. Vernon Dean was all over him. And Dean had it played extremely well for the rookie. 
Quick, the youngster from Philadelphia. Watch him go down on his cut here. Starts to plant, make his turn. He'll slip and fall, and you'll see number 32, Dean, come. And you know Dean had six points flashing through his mind great. when he saw the receiver go down. And great timing on the defense. Now, Tony Franklin has come in to try a field goal. He does not like to kick off grass. He likes the artificial surface. He's, of course, the barefooted one. He's hit three of four this year. All his field goals have been tried from 40-yard lines out. This is from the 52-yard attempt from the 42 to be way short. Way short. Johnny Shire was holding. The rain is coming down. The Redskins are up 10 rounds. Game number one between these two teams was a high-scoring affair. Artificial surface, beautiful day. Is this going to be a different kind of a game, or is this one going to be sort of a slugfest, you think? Now? I think this one's going to turn into a wrestling match, Tommy. I don't think we're going to see all the scoring we saw in that first one, but it's going to be physical. Here's the reverse to Ricky Walker, the tight end, number 88, out to the 41-yard line, and he is alone. John Budding, the linebacker, making the tackle. A double tight end offense. Walker was a guy, 6'4", 235 pounds, that we told you played for Dick Vermeil at UCLA that was recruited by Vermeil's dentist. Had a pass in the Rose Bowl as UCLA went to the Rose Bowl that year. And he caught it from a young man who plays safety from the Eagles, Johnny John Shara. Shara. Shara just gave birth to a... A little baby boy the other day, they called him John Philip Shire. Not John Philip Sousa, but John Philip Shire. Riggins off the left side, about a yard or so, short of the first down. Run it at Carl Harrison, and 78 was right there. They like to run behind number 66, Jacoby, a lot on short yardage situations. The big second year guy, he's 295 pounds. Great story about him, Ricky. We heard it yesterday from the coach. They thought that he was a defensive lineman. <laughs> they drafted him and almost sent him home. They said that this big hog we're talking about, Jacoby, uh, he didn't tell uh, the Coach Gibbs that he wasn't a defensive lineman. He took the bonus and went home and got ready to come back to camp. And the coaches say that he's the most coachable of all those young offensive linemen. 6'7", 295. Harrison said he's very strong. Here's a strong side run by Rivers, and Clark has him. Kenny Clark making a tackle back to the 39-yard line. And Denny Harrison also in on the play. And Robinson. Looks like the Eagle defense beginning to strap it on a little bit. Good play by Ken Clark on defense, but watch Jacoby again, number 66, top of the screen. He's blocking down. It's Hairston there. He's about 6'9, so he can spread that big body his out around a lot. Ken Clark. Looks like he can play the NBA play. front court, huh? Yes, he does. Looks like Rambus, that guy with the Lakers. Rambus would like to wait 290, I think. There's Carl Hairston. He does get hurt and come back to play again, so he is slipping, though. It looks like he's been nicked in that last block by Jacoby. Here's young Jeff Hayes. Wally Henry waiting for the kick at the Eagle 21. Vermeil was very serious about this game. He said this might be as important a game as he's had since coming to the Eagles in 76. The rush is on. Hayes gets it off. A funny scribbling kick that hits at the 33. Nobody will touch that one. Eagles ball at the 26-yard line, first and 10. Impressive defensive show by the Redskins so far, and the offense didn't do shabby either. 5.23 left. That's Coach Vermeer on the right, talking to Marion Campbell on the left, the defensive coordinator, the assistant head coach, as you will. And Vermeer uh, was very serious. Carol did not make the trip. She was up at Penn State for a graduation of their daughter, but Dick was very serious. This is before the game. I had never seen him go and talk to everybody on an individual basis and make sure that they understood it was also a, a very important game. Quite a program. In five years after coming from UCLA, he took this Eagle program to the Super Bowl. Perhaps he did it too quickly. You don't win them all, all the time. First down and 10 on the 30-yard line. Jaworski unable to get much going on offense. Straight drop back. He's sliding. He's being rushed. Gets to Carmichael at midfield. Harrell falls into Washington territory over Vernon Dean. 
In fact, there was a little bit of a pass rush then by either Butts or Dexter Manley got pretty close to the quarterback. Well, the situation right there where Butts came up the middle, number 65, and, and the poor footing, the mud out there helped Jaworski that time because 295-pound Butts couldn't change direction after he beat the initial block. That is a roller skating bear, huh? Three of 14. One interception, 44 yards. A lot have been dropped, and there's been some good defensive play, too. First down. Inside drive to Jamona. Out of the eye. Jamona with a couple. Perry Brooks hanging in there. A lot of people don't see the 4-3 defense much. You see in all 34, so you have to sort of prepare. It's like going against a single wing team in the old collegiate days. Right. You, know? you didn't see it very often. Joe Gibbs thinks that uh, running a 4-3 is an advantage to him and his team. He, he mentioned that one time this year they were getting ready to play the St. Louis Cardinals. I think it was in preseason or something like that. And uh, it was the first time in nine games that they had to get ready to play a 4-3 team. Makes your guards uh, get you get their attention because they usually are uncovered against the 34. Second down at eight. Jaworski back to set up. He's got footy. Like Jamona at the 31 yard line. Jarris White covering. Good throw. A comeback pattern. Now, Wilbert Montgomery has not played. He has fairly uh, a bad injury of the ribs, which is a very hard area to strap up or control. And I remember in, uh, in 1980 when Wilbert Montgomery went down, Jamona started four games in a row. The Eagles won all four. First and ten. Good catch by Louis Jamona. Two backs in there now. Now they're in the eye. Harrington Jamona. Drive to Perry Harrington. 35. Blast it from the ball. There's a scramble down there. It looks like Jerry Sizemore and the Redskins are fighting for it. And I believe Washington has the football. Let's see. Peters, the safety man, came up with it. Harrington had some yardage. And then lost the ball. From ground level, you'll eventually see Tony Peters come up with a fumble recovery. Straight ahead blocking, straight ahead power run. The ball flies loose. Peters playing his 110th consecutive game for the Redskins. That's his third big play in this one. And all the talk you hear about turnovers, when the rain's coming down like this, they even become more important. It is really raining now. Monks in motion, straight handoff to John Riggins. Riggins came into the game the leading rusher in the NFC. This is Riggins kind of turf right now too, oh. Tom, and, and those hogs up front, they call them. You saw on their t-shirts before the game that they, they got a picture of a hog and he is muddy. <laughs> now, Riggins will slug it out with you on this kind of turf, this kind of terrain, and he'll be coming at you in the fourth quarter just like he does in the first. He's very, very strong. He's a tremendous amount of stamina. Riggins has 16 yards on 11 carries. It's been tough so far. Second down, six. Here's Muck coming outside for the block. Riggins looking, cutting back against it. Gets to the 29-yard line, short of the first down. Don't forget at halftime. At halftime, Brent, Phyllis, Irv, Jimmy the Greek scores and highlights, plus Mickey Mac McDonald, my old teammate with the Eagles, number 25. They have a feature that Irv Cross did uh, with little Tommy McDonald. As tall as Harold Carmichael is, McDonald was just as short. He never wore a face mask, and I could never catch him to give him a lick. <laughs> <laughs> That's at half. The second year receivers coach for the Redskins named Charlie Taylor, their all time great receiver. He was a running back in college. He's done a great job with, with these people here. Rookie, uh, he was one of the, the most physical of, of wide receivers that's ever played the game. And he's got a kid here that he really likes, Art Muck, and we'll talk about him later. And he's helped Charlie Brown, the young man we've seen who is so sensational. Here's the inside handoff to John Rickens. Rickens is short of the first down. The Eagle defense really stacked it up. LaMaster in there. Bill Friel, my statistician here, and informs me the Eagles haven't scored in the first half since against Cleveland back before BS, before the strike. 
Rookie, I think that there was young Anthony Griggs in there that time, too. The rookie from Ohio State made a good play in there, I think, on that last play. Tremendous linebacker. Villanova, when they dropped football, uh, gave up on football, and he went to Ohio State. Here's Jeff Hayes. Former Tar Heel. That's Wally Henry. A Rose Bowl hero for Dick Vermeil a few years ago. UCLA. Here's the kick. Uh-oh, bad snap. Hayes feels it and gets off a pretty good kick considering. It's sliding away from Wally Henry and is going to be right at midfield. And the Eagles have 58 seconds left. And how many timeouts do they still have? Three timeouts left for the Eagles. They've got 58 seconds left. A lot of time. Next Saturday, the NCAA brings you Army against the Navy. They've been playing one another since 1890. In 82 meetings now, check this out. Navy holds a one-game lead. The NCAA today kicks off the day at 12 o'clock noon Eastern time. That's next Saturday on CBS Sports. The Army and the Navy. Starbuck against Peter Dawkins. I'm trying to think of all the great games through the year. They've been great. Right here on CBS. First and 10 from the 48, Jaworski to Billy Canfield inside the 40. Canfield to the 36-yard line. A great third down ball player, Billy Canfield. He's a spot player, but he plays a lot bigger and better than it perhaps looks like he is. They use him just for that reason. He made some big catches in uh, the first two games this year. That was his 12th reception of the year for number 37, Canfield. That catch right there. He's a bodybuilding specialist. He loves to work the weights. He carries about 204, but he is a pagoda. Played with Nolan Cromwell at Kansas. It's pretty good backfield, huh? Yeah, he was a blocking <laughs> back in college, but he, he still averaged over six yards a carry. But he's a spot player here. Comes in and performs those relief roles extremely well. The offensive line. Pretty tough. They're blocking pretty well on the line of scrimmage. Jaworski, big problems that have been in that secondary. The Redskins secondary has played the ball extremely well so far. He's had the ball in there on a couple of occasions and just good hits by the Redskins uh, have brought his receivers off the football. Jaworski's numbers, 5 of 16 now for 73. The one interception. But number 70 is a sticker. And he is tough. I've seen him knocked out, and he'll come back in in the second half, the second quarter, whatever it is. Don't count him out. First and 10, 51 seconds left. Shotgun time. The rush is on. Jaworski with time. He's going deep up the sideline. Jarris White. Jarris White makes his second interception of the day as Rod Smith cannot take the ball away from the left quarterback. Well, Jarrett White, the veteran, came from Tampa Bay, came up with another interception. Jaworski really never had it over there on this one, as Jarrett White was in command all the way on this. A little blitz up front, but picked up extremely well by the Eagles' offensive line. Look at it here, and you'll see White, Smith, and White's in tremendous shape. He was screening Smith off just like he was a basketball rebounder. You almost feel like that Redskins secondary is in the eagle huddle, don't you? Jaworski's reaction. Yeah, second interception by Jarris White. Deep in Redskins territory with 44 seconds left. And now Feisman's got to be somewhat careful with a 10-0 lead. Ricky Walker in motion. Feisman falls down. Thirty-five seconds left. First quarter was a 45-yard field goal by Mark Mosley. Then the touchdown pass to Charlie Brown. One timeout burned by the Redskins. They just don't want to make a, a glaring mistake on offense. That would hurt them. I think that timeout was on the Eagles, Tom. I think they want to stop the clock right here with Washington in this kind of field position and at least make him snap the ball one more time and hope something bad will happen. Next week, the doubleheader week on CBS. Next Sunday, of course, it all starts with the NFL today with, with Brent and Jimmy and Irv and Phyllis. Minnesota against Miami. 
St. Louis against these Eagles at Met Stadium. Dallas goes against Washington, or you might see Atlanta against Denver. Those are good matchups. 12.30 Eastern time, and Dallas plays these Redskins here. Perhaps on a better day, but the Dallas Cowboys looked tough to me the other day. Well, they did. They came back from the strike, and uh, first, when you got a guy like Dorsett to give it to, you don't have to tune up too much some days. The rain is coming down. If anything, it is perhaps more and worse, and it's a little colder. Beisman keeps the ball again. 26 seconds. Clock is ticking now. Beisman just stalling out. 17. A 10-0 lead. Halftime, we're going to have all the scores from around the league with Brent Musburger and company back in New York. And also look at Tommy McDonald. Number 25. Young Hayes now kicking off. Uh, slimy kick that goes to the 15, picked up by Wally Henry to the 21 and Barry. Boy, the Redskins handled the bad turf and the rain better than the Eagles did. How about these stats? Great defensive effort by the Redskins, as you see, in the total yards. 99 for the Eagles in that first half. Look at the passing yards for for Theismann, 204, and he didn't throw it the last minute or so, just getting into the halftime with a safe 10-0 lead. By the way, the 65-yard the touchdown pass by Charlie Brown from Theismann is not even his longest. Uh, he had a 78-yarder against the Eagles in game number one. The quarterback is still Ron Jaworski, number seven. Harrington's the remaining back. Inside handoff, he makes the veer, cuts to the outside, gets to the 25-yard line. How much early passing now would the Eagles do? With, since it's still only 10-0, do you think they might go ahead and try to... I don't think they have to panic right now and, and go to a, a total passing game. I am very sure, knowing Dick Vermeil and his personality time, that he got in there in halftime and said to the guys in green, we've got to get down to basics now. We're going to go back to what we do best, what got us uh, in the playoffs the last three or four years, and that's running the ball and playing tough football up front. And I think they'll come out and try to take charge of the line of scrimmage right away. The offensive line must handle that forehand front by Washington. Straight drop back to three-stepper to the outside. Spagnola hit and drill short of the first down at the 28-yard line. That's Vernon D. He's only 178 pounds, but he likes to tackle people. Looks like you ought to be able to play action pass on him, but he's been able to rise to the occasion. Well, he's a hitter, Vernon D. That's one of the reasons they have him in there. And he's been getting a lot of help from the veteran Joe Lavender, who works with him daily. And that's saying a lot for a guy that's uh, been around the league a long time. You know, a lot, of, a lot of veterans sometimes won't help the young guys, but Lavender's been doing it with number 32, Dean. Third down and three. Early moments of the second half. Jaworski and shotgun. Inside hand off to Canfield. Billy Canfield breaks out to about the 31 and a half or 32. I don't believe it's to the sticks. But sat on him there. It's like a draw, only a little bit quicker right here off the shotgun. Camfield slides over a couple steps, takes it on up the middle, and big number 65 slides over and makes the stop. That was Dave Butts. Butts acquired a course from the St. Louis Cardinals a few years ago for two number ones and a number two. But he's played very solid against the run. I am told he's as good a defensive tackle as there is in football. Just short, inches short. What do you do? You go for it with 10 nothing? Uh, Dick Vermeil had that situation last week against the Cincinnati Bengals and ran a quarterback sneak and kind of wishes now he hadn't have done that. So I think they'll punt the ball here. It's still 10 to nothing with lots of time. 13-20 left in the third period. Some of our parabolic mics are picking up the talk from the field so you can be involved. Runnigers averaging over 42 yards a kick. He's keeping those hands warm. It is just cold enough and rainy enough to be miserable, unless you're playing football. Really, that's about the yeah. most comfortable people here, the They're players. They're not going to be drinking too much Gatorade out there today. <laughs> Nelms is back on the Redskin 34. We keep telling you that 
forget that average. This guy is a dynamite stick with a punt at any time. Kick it away from him. Maxi Runner just waiting for his coverage. And now it gets a block almost. A big rush by number 86 over on the far sideline as Didier, the receiver, the tight end, I believe blocked part of the punt. I think he got a hand on it. Runniger did a smart thing. They were not putting any pressure on him, so he held it as long as he could. He held it perhaps a fraction of a second longer. And the Redskins have good field position. In close, but did not get a hand on it. Runniger slipping as he was kicking. Just got off a poor kick. And a tough time to do it. Right at midfield. Theisman has the outfits out there. Brown, reverse motion. Back to John Riggins. Riggins got outside. Riggins inside the 40. Steams to the 38-yard line. Bray Wilson making the tackle. Riggins seems to float for a big guy. First time all afternoon that he's popped outside, and he was behind the big guard, number 73, Mark May, who pulled and led the way for him. Big second-year guard out of Pittsburgh, who was their number one choice here a year ago. Riggins' toe has bothered him. He had a, he had his big toe in the whirlpool. <laughs> Looks like he having a little trouble with it right now but he walked it off he's 33 yards and 14 carries now and those are the career numbers astronomical back to Riggins running left this time good tackle from behind by Kenny Clark the nose tackle you know Tom what's amazing is Riggins carries again now for the second time in a row is that Joe Washington is healthy for the Washington Redskins and uh, I thought that we would see him in this ball game much before this but I think because of the shape the fields in and the way that this guy can run on it that's perhaps why they're holding Washington out if they do bring him in it'll certainly be in passing situation just remember the very fact that Wilbert Montgomery could not play at all had to elevate the Redskins spirits and sort of dampen the Eagles when they even came out before the game started hmm? without question Thiesman. prolific so far today, back to throw his first pass in the second half. It's called a dash to the left side. Oh, just say, just misses it out of bounds. Virgil had it for a moment. They looked like he looked at the line and dropped the ball. I think that Theisman originally wanted to go to Art Monk uh, a little bit shorter here. Monk came out of the backfield after being in motion. He slipped and fell on his cut. You'll see number 81 go down right there. Theisman then went right here to say number 46 Edwards over and gets a hand on it. That's a pretty good defensive play. I think he just tipped it. Just tipped it out of there. Good play by the quarterback and a great block by Jacoby on Carl Hairston. Some battle there. Third down and 11. Seven step drop. Theisman going for it to Charlie Brown. Rod Elliott ready to do the corner for it. Tom, the play before that, where we saw Monk in, in front and the, as, the, as the primary receiver, is an indication of, of the way Joe Gibbs has Joe Theismann working. He just gives him half of the field to work with, and uh, he doesn't have to read defenses. He just goes in progression from one receiver to another. And that points out why he's been able to have such a good year and why he's been able to keep his interception rate down. It looks complicated, Wayne, but actually it's, it's sort of simplified. Yeah, huh? it works itself out because they all come open at different times. Good thinking by Gibbs, and they're a hot team. Here's Wally Henry waiting for Hayes' punt. Hayes are just trying to drop it somewhere near the end. It's a high one this time. Wally Henry giving the offense room a fair catch it at the 15. And so, with 11.42 left in the third period, no score in the second half, but the Redskins got good block on the outside. Carmichael gets to the 30-yard line. Jerry Sizemore out in front. It's a, a great play for them and has been over the years. A quick screen out there to Carmichael. Brooke, I know you've seen that year in and year out with, with the Eagles, and they've been extremely successful with it. Boy, Wilbert Montgomery really runs it. They just raise up. He fakes like he's going downfield. Comes back. They get people out in front. Sizemore gets a block. Morris is out there. A well-conceived play. First down. 11-04 in the third. Eagles are shut out so far. 10-0. Jaworski back to throw. He has solid footing. Outside the ball is hanging. Looks like it was caught at the 39. By Ronnie Smith, number 81. The flags are down. The flags are down. Looks like Carmichael at least thinks he was being held. Holding 
on the Redskins, the temporary call by Ben Dry. That ball was sort of end over end. A good catch by Smith. It was because did you see how Vernon Dean, the rookie, closed on that ball when it was in the air? Now the option is whether the Eagles got more yardage by taking the play or whether they're going to take the automatic first down with defensive holding. Defensive holding declined. It'll be second down and one yard to go. Which means they're not afraid. The Eagles are not afraid of picking up the first down, but they got more yardage out of this rather than from point of foul. Come down to play with here too. Second down and short yardage. They might go play action and, and try to get it deep. Couple of scores elsewhere. The Green Bay on top of the Jets, 13 to six. This time they made the extra point. That's some battle. Atlanta, St. Louis, now 14-13. Wow. And Buffalo stopping Baltimore. They're in the third. The blitz is on. The short yards. Perry Hurd breaks through. Hurd at the 45. He's got good speed. Jarris White runs him out the 24-yard line. Perry Harrington will run the 40 in about 4-5. Tommy, you called it the blitz is on, and that's why there was no linebacker over on that side to fill in. Kaufman was blitzing. Look at him there. 52 Olkowitz goes inside. Kaufman is blitzing. He can't fill in. Harrington pops it outside. When you got everybody going, that's the chance you take. If they break the line of scrimmage, it's big yardage. I think Vermeil's glad he bounced outside that time. Big play. Good call. And it looks like the Eagles may have a few plays up at halftime. The crowd now becoming very animated. Spagnuolo in motion. Jaworski set. He set this time. Going deep for Ronnie Smith. Knocked away by Jarris White. And I believe White got away with grabbing the receiver and then let him go. Well, there, are a lot, there was a lot of hand fighting going on down there at the end <laughs> that time. I guarantee I think both of them were guilty of it. I don't know how people play secondary anymore. They really can't hit anybody except in that first five-yard zone, but the Redskins have done a great job and gotten away with it. A lot of people feel now, a lot of coaches around the National Football League feel that this in the entire game now is played on the corners. Look at that. There's a little push. <laughs> There's maybe another one right there. Now we'll think what Jaws thinks of that right now. We'll go to him. It's second down and 10. Here comes the safety blitz. The ball is unloaded for Spagnola. Cut and dropped by Spagnola at the five-yard line. As Kaufman makes a great play, the young free agent linebacker. Kaufman, the kid they called the gamer, came up with a big play then. Safety blitz. Mark Murphy coming in from his free safety position. That put Kaufman, the linebacker, on the tight end. Number 29, Murphy, has a free shot. Hits Jaworski just as he releases. And a good play by number 55. Looked like Spagnola, the Yaley, had it for a minute, but when they came down to the ground, the linebacker wins it. A very large play in the game. Third down and 10. Have to settle for a field goal attempt. A long but this one doesn't work for the Eagles. The blitz is on. Jaworski reads it. Underthrow. Intended for Mike Quick, the rookie, on the slant. White was there. The Redskins have a pretty good defensive scheme going, Tom. On their blitzes, a lot of people are coming open. That time it was Kaufman on the blitz, and no one picked him up. That means Jaworski has to go to the hot receiver and do it right away. And with a wet ball and your feet slipping a little bit, that is difficult indeed. All right, here's Franklin's second attempt of the day, the fifth of the year. From the 31, so it'll be a 41-yard attempt. Johnny Charlotte is holding again, and we hope the door is closed at the end of the stadium. High snap. It's long enough. Dead solid, perfect. The Eagles off the Snyder, on the scoreboard. 10-24 left in the third period. We suddenly have a football game. There's the man to kick the field goal, Tony Franklin. He can bang it. Even off the grass, he doesn't like to kick from. Here's his kickoff. This is important. It's a driving kick. Nelms at the 10. Look out. Nelms. Oh, he's fighting the football. 59 out. Chesley, I believe, falls on as Carl Harrison made the tackle, and Chesley recovers the fumble. 
Well, somebody on the special teams of the Eagles got a big hit. That ball popped about 15 feet in the air, and then it was number 59, Chesley, with the recovery. Chesley's got his whole family here. He's from the Washington area. He has nine or ten brothers and sisters. Let's take a look here, Brookie, and see if we can pick up who made the hit, whether they got a hand in there and punched it out or whether it was a helmet. You see the ball fly out of there like that. It's usually somebody sticking their headgear in there and knocking it loose. Now I'm starts behind the wedge up the middle. There it is. It's Greg Brown. It's Greg 98. Brown, and it was the headgear. He's also from the Washington area. That's where they found him. He's working on construction right here in D.C. What a play. Mellon's fumbling. Eagles in position. First and 10 at the 27. Jaworski, quick drop, going outside to Spagnola. Great catch of a wet ball to the 24-yard line. Jaworski looks more assured than he did in the first half. Even though maybe he's not trying to put uh, his feet down so firmly, he looks like he's sort of sliding back now, taking it easy, setting up. Well, I think so. He'll make an adjustment. Uh, as we mentioned, right before halftime, the good ones usually do. Spagnola making a, a catch. Got a big hands to hold on to a wet ball from the backside of it. Outside like that. Second down, five. Jaworski back, the blitz is on. Spagnola doesn't know he has the ball, and Murphy knocked it away at the last minute. That time, the, the Redskins ran the same blitz they ran in that previous series, but it was picked up by the Eagles that time. Guy Morris, the center, came out. Watch number 50 snap the ball to Jaworski. Now watch him leave, look outside for the linebacker, Kaufman, pick him up, and give Jaworski the time he needs. Spagnola didn't know it, but the ball almost stuck on his jersey. Good play by Murphy. What a ball game. Third and five. On the Redskins, 22. It's shotgun time. The blitz is on. Jaworski finds Billy Canfield. Canfield fumbles. The ball goes out of bounds. And the Eagles will be short of a first down, but they've got the completion. Malone was there, the linebacker. Campfield, their Preston Pearson guy, out of the shotgun now. Campfield would be the wing back or the slot back over on the right hand side, out of your view. Blitz is on, Jaworski unloads. Campfield makes the catch, turns upfield. That's Rich Malott, number 57, who knocks the ball out, strips it. The ball goes out of bounds, so the Eagles retain possession, but they are about a yard short of the first down, and it is fourth down. Campfield's body had the first down, but he didn't have the football. Fourth down and one. It's a 10-3 ball game in the third period. Toss play. Get Jamona. Jamona inside. I don't believe he made it. He lost the yard. Oakley lets the middle linebacker there. Jamona at 180 pounds, maybe. appear from here that there was much forward movement. Now the Redskin defense are reacting like it definitely is short. Now ben Dried, the referee, just wants to make sure everybody knows around the country is watching too on television. The Redskins have held. Huh? Here's how you destroy an offensive play if you're playing on defense. Watch Bagnola, number 88, come in motion. He's the key blocker on this toss. Now he's going to really be hit right here as he turns upfield by number 50, Larry Kubin, the backup middle linebacker for the Redskins, a guy from Penn State <laughs> who the coaching staff feels is perhaps their wild man, their maniac on defense, can hit as well as anybody on the ball club. So he threw a monkey wrench into that whole thing there. The adjustment the ball carrier have to make after his penetration. 
Great stand by the Redskin defense. Thiesel back to throw. Screens it out in the flat to Warren, the tight end. Warren gets out over the 26 or 7-yard line. Edwards making the tackle. It appears to me that maybe the Redskins have decided to pick up the tempo on offense a little bit and not to act like they're sitting back, right? To, because it looks like the Eagles have come out to play some football in this second half. And the Redskins need points. 9-18 left in the third period. They still lead 10-3. But momentum has sort of gone for the green, at least temporarily. First down run up the middle by John Riggins. Kirk, we might mention that number 98, Greg Brown, is playing right defensive end now for the Eagles. Carl Hairston, uh, a, a slight knee injury, probably won't be back. Bad news, bad news for the Eagles against the run particularly. 14-7, Minnesota over Chicago. St. Louis back on top of Atlanta, 17-13. St. Louis, of course, comes to Vet Stadium to play the Eagles. Everybody's still a long way from home on this Sunday afternoon. It has let up. The rain is not coming down as hard. Theismann sets up. He's going to run with it. He is dangerous. Slides under the tackle and gets to the 35-yard line. Kenny Clark, the nose tackle, making sure. I can recall a, his senior year in college, Joe Theismann, had like a 500-yard throwing day against SC in the mud out on the West Coast. He can load it up for some reason and when the elements are against you horribly and do a pretty good job on an off track. 7.51. Reverse to Monk. Number 81 being chased and dropped by Jerry Robinson. Back on the 27-yard line. Robinson has that great speed from in there, doesn't he? That was Robinson. I think that was the defensive end that time. Dennis Harrison, number 68, Brookie. As you're getting, jerseys are getting muddy out there. We might be able to chance to take a look at it again. Well, you'll see the pull on the reverse by number 68, Russ Grimm, on the left-hand side of Theismann. That he won't be able to get the block. And it'll be number 68. Oh, that is right a good there. play. Good play by Denny Bigfoot Harrison. 11 of 18 for 212 yards. Third down and 12. Theismann had a lot of time going deep. Almost thrown into the interception as John Shara came back to get it. They had some stunts and loops going on that time and the, the Eagle defensive line and the Hogs, that offensive line of Washington, put up a wall around Theismann that time and he threw a wobbler out there. I know that slipped out of his hand. That was a lot shorter than, we, than uh, he intended. Check this now. See the stunts up front? And they're just zoning, picking up people, and Tyson's got all day. That looks like the last shot out of Roman Candle. You know he wanted that <laughs> one back after he let go. Yeah, it slipped out a little bit. Here's Hayes, young kicker, standing back on the 14-yard line. Gets a good snap this time. An average kick. Caught by Wally Henry at the 44-yard line. Advantage Philadelphia, but Tempo doesn't always win games. It's again next Saturday, NCAA basketball, NCAA basketball, if you will, on CBS. The Villanova Wildcats, who went all the way to the semis before Carolina beat them last year by 10 points against the Kentucky Wildcats, a, a team that's young and big and bullish, and it should be something right here on CBS, 4 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday. Hand off to Harrington. Harrington gets two or three yards running at the right defensive side of the Redskins. Brooks was there. I can't believe that Harrington wouldn't have been the ball carrier on fourth and a foot rather than Louis Jamona. I'm just, I'm not second guessing. Well, I guess I am in a way. A little bit. But 175 pounds versus 2'8 or something is a big difference. Second down and seven on the 47. 
Harrington with 61 yards rushing now. Fumbled by Jaworski. Recovered by Jaworski on the 41. Boy, Larry Cuban was right there. Second time this afternoon that Jaworski and Morris have had problems with the snap. <laughs> and there's Cuban, number 50, who we talked about earlier. The hitter from Penn State. Ground level here. Take a look at the snap. Goss never had control. May have been out a little early. Remember they said Cuban almost knocked John Wiggins out just in dummy scrimmage here one day, and that teammates carried him off the field. On their shoulders. A wild Penn Stater, huh? Third down and 12. A big play now with 5.30 left in this third period. The blitz is on. Jaworski sets up beautifully and rifles. A good catch by young Mike Quick. Enough for the first down, a good pattern. Jaworski looks like a different quarterback than played in the first half. A good catch under these conditions by the number one draft choice, Mike Quick. Jaworski, plenty of time that time. Good job up front. An out pattern right there. Ball's right on the money and a fine catch. They like this guy. He's not a burner, Tommy, right? But they like him. He'll catch the ball over the middle, and he's an excellent blocker. And he's tough. First down and 10 on the Redskin 44. The fake going up. So Harold Carmichael bounces off the hands at the 27-yard line. Let's go to New York City, where Brent Musburger has an update for us. Brent? Brookie hits the Jets, they score. Here's Mike Augustiniak from five yards out. But Brookie Pat Leahy missed his second extra point. The Packers still ahead 13-12. Let's go back to Brookie now in Washington. Well, the Packers and the Jets are putting excitement back at the extra points. They've only had one made right with four touchdowns. Packers, the best second half team in football as it goes right now. That's right. They always were, weren't they? They were pretty good. Second down and 10 on the 44. Blitz is on. Jaworski has it red. Going for Harold Carmichael. Carmichael catches it. Gets away from Paris White. And he's going to take a walk to the end zone. The typical mismatch you'd ever want. Somebody six, eight and a half against a five foot eleven cornerback. Yeah, and plus give uh, just the overall offensive scheme of the Philadelphia Eagles credit that time. They made an adjustment on the blitz. Once we saw Guy Morris pick up the blitz a time before that time, Harrington made a good block on a blitzing linebacker to allow Jaworski to get this pass off. And when you got 6'8", going about, uh, against about 5'11", or 6' foot right there, it's a mismatch, and he'll just walk it on in. You know, Jerry Waffler is the offensive coordinator that sets up how to handle the blitzes at all. It looks like they really did a job at halftime. Tony Franklin, all extra points have been good so far this year. Hit the ball and did not go through. The extra point did not go through. Hit the left bar. And Franklin is mad. down again end zone view you'll see the blitz come in from the left side of your screen Harrington's over he goes down 55 goes down so Jaworski has the time to do this but it ends up just six points as the Philadelphia Eagles have missed the extra point and the skins lead it now by a score of 10 to 9 we've still got 429 left in the third quarter Eagles, that's Mel Coffin 55 he'll come in from the outside he's been a thorn in Jaworski's side two or three times today Looks like he has it here, doesn't he? But he doesn't. The block by Harrington puts him down. And of course, if the blitz doesn't get to the quarterback, it's single coverage. It's tough back deep. And you know how you guys hate that back there. Tony Franklin, the number three draft back in 79 out of Texas A&M. Pull the extra point. Helms is waiting. Remember last time, Mike Nelms fumbled. Now to the 10. Now, breaks out over the 30. He's got running room. Midfield. Mike Nelms pulled down from behind the 32 yard line. He is 
the kickoff returner in the National Football League. Number 21, Mike Downs, third-year player from Baylor. He has been in the last two Pro Bowls just to do this. Return punts, return kicks. This one goes for 58 yards. And Ellis makes the tackle from behind. From a fumble on one return to a 58-yard return with the next one. Here's Feisman, split it out right, being chased, grabbed by Dennis Harrison. It's a sack. Big pass rush by Bigfoot. Harrison working from the left side over there. One of the few times today that Theismann's protection has broken down. Milms is some kind of a returner, and the special teams play has been so good for Joe Good Gibbs' Redskin team. Milms was a guy nobody wanted for a long time. He was cut by Buffalo, went to Canada. A couple teams dropped him up there. Came back down here, and he's a pro bowl. He could maybe run for Congress. Being chased, Eisner gets it up. Dropped by number 38, Clarence Harmon. Heisman feeling some pressure that time from his blind side. As we mentioned, Carl Harrison out. Greg Brown, number 98, working against Jacoby, number 66. He'll take him and then beat him around the corner here to the outside. And a little late hit on Theismann. Brown had one of those sacks on Theismann in the opening game. Jacoby probably finding the quicker defensive end a little more difficult to block. The numbers on Theismann. Third down play, third and a lot, third and 19. Theismann going across the minute, end over end, puck by Say at the 27 yard line. Another small receiver, but he's got great speed. One of the Smurfs, they call him, along with a Alvin Garrett, the two smallest guys on the team. Say is five foot eight, 175 pounds, and he's a role player. He's got great speed. He's one of nine, 600. Came out of the backfield that time, and Theismann with plenty of time, got the ball to him, but they're short of the first down. Mosley will be trying the field goal from the hold of Joe Theismann at the 32 and a half, or 33, call it, so it's a 43-yard attempt. It's a 10-9 football game. Here's Mosley straight ahead. I don't know. It made it. Mosley got it off. Devon had a chance to block it, but he didn't get there. A big three-pointer by Mark Mosley, who used to be an eagle. And 13 in a row now. 13 field goals in a row for Mark Mosley. Kicker, and he has worked very hard. He fought off a challenge in training camp this year. Rookie uh, was, was close to losing his job to a rookie kicker. And then right at the end, Joe Gibbs said, well, you know, if, if I'm going to go down, if it's going to go down to a point in the game, I, I want Mosley in there. So Mosley was on the active list at the start of the year just because Gibbs had that kind of faith in him that he would come through in clutch situations. And you know, he said that without having to kick off now, he can save his leg and he feels much better uh, when he goes in for a 40 yard or a 42 yard. Because young Hayes, Jeff Hayes, the North Carolinian will be doing the kicking off. And in this phase of the game, the Redskins are number one in going down and covering kickoffs. The teams barely get to the 15 yard line against this team. A deep men back. Wally Henry. And Billy Campbell. This is Henry at the 10. A short kick. Henry to the 25. And no fumble either. A 10 9 football, pardon me, a 13 9 football game. A missed extra point and a good field goal by Mosley. Don't forget the night on the night on CBS. The rain is beginning to fall a little bit again as it falls in front of the stadium clock here. In the booth down from us doing radio, Sam Hunt and Sonny Jones. Two Redskin type people. They used to be with the Giants and the Eagles respectively. Ron Smith's in motion. This is the toss back to Harrington. Harrington hurrying over the 30-yard line to the 31. Murphy making the tackle. Harrington beginning to edge toward 100 yards rushing. Perry Harrington, the number two draft. A 
three years ago. He's got 66 yards on 10 carries. But Wilbert Montgomery has not played a snap. It's raining. You can see Jaworski making sure that his hands are wet. I can't believe he's having to put saliva on it. But it's coming down again. The fake toss. Oh, Burley gets it off. Hits Smith. A good catch in the left flat. Smith steps over a couple. Smith has good speed and gets to the 45-yard line. That's a tough catch. Well, that was a great throw, too, by number seven, Jaworski, and he paid for it. It's to see him coming off a little bit shaken up. I think he's going to stay in the ball game, but he took a shot on that quick screen out to Smith. One of those guys, Brooke, it seems sometimes like the quarterbacks are just instinctive about that blind side of theirs, about just feeling those people when they're close to him. The blitz on again that time. That was Manley, as Walters left early to go out and block on the... Uh, on the screen, so that left Manley open to come in, and he was in there in a second. Dexter was there quickly. Jaworski stays in, as we've said before. He is tough. The fake, quick drop, good across the hill. Carmichael knocked away. Good play by Vernon Dean, the rookie. Jaworski, 13 of 30 for 100 and. 91 yards. But he's had a lot of passes on the money, Tom, and if it hadn't been just good defensive play in the secondary by the Redskins, he'd have about six or seven more completions. They have been hitting. 106 left in the third period. A 13 to 9 game. Washington leading. Only 55 yards for Ron Jaworski at halftime. He has come back blistering. Quick drop. A lot of time. Going deep for Carmichael. Carmichael tries to catch it at the 19-yard line. Jarris White right there. Boy, Jaworski laid that ball out. That was a perfect spiral. That was a spaceship. Going for his big target, but once again, nothing is uncontested in that, in that Redskins secondary today. Were you surprised that Coach Gibbs told us yesterday that he wasn't sure that this team could could beat a team like the Eagles twice in the same season? I think he really feels that, uh, that perhaps uh, the Eagles out-personnel him a little bit at, at this stage of the, the development of the Redskins. He also just thinks it's tough for any team to beat another team twice in one season. Some game. Long way from over. Third down and ten. Carmichael's in the slot. Jaworski's being rushed. Goes to the outside. It is a little low and slippery. Dexter Manley knocked Jaworski down again. Well, they're bringing people in from all over. That time it was Tony Peters, a strong safety, too, rookie that was in there on Jaworski that, that made that initial hit. They're moving their safeties around. Both safeties have blitzed. All three linebackers have blitzed. They're not showing him the same look twice. Jaworski on the drop, and you'll see number 23 coming in right there, left side, and gives him a bang right in the ribcage as he releases. The safety men love that shot. That's get even time. Runniger back out. And of course, Nelms at the other end waiting for the long one. Runniger's had one bad kick. This is a pretty good kick, but it's going to be low. Nelms on a run. At the 30, Nelms ganged up and dropped at the 37 yard line. Armstrong making the tackle. One thing about Nelms that, that you really got to like. Uh, other than the fact that he can break a thing, that is, he doesn't try to break it the minute he gets the football. He goes upfield and, and gets gets some yardage initially and then tries to break it from there. We were talking about uh, Leon Bright with the Giants being hurt the other day on CBS. We saw it in the Thanksgiving game when he was hit before the kick came down. And Nelm says that he does think there should be a thing there. He says he's peripherally, he sees everybody that has a chance to do that. But the kicker is really pretty vulnerable if somebody wants to take an early shot. Maybe they should be thrown out of a game if they do that. I think so. Monk in motion. Dyson going across the middle. It's deflected away from John Wiggins. I tell you, the Eagle defense is getting after Thysman a lot now. They're beginning to get some penetration. Kenny Clark was in his face. And they're doing it without blitzing a lot. They've only brought the linebacker just a few times. They're, they're looping and stunning up there. Trying to confuse that offensive line of the Redskins. And Denny Harrison has sort of put some spark in from that left defensive end spot, hasn't he? 
The field is getting chewed up. We told you it's real grass. It was Art Muck on that last play looking for some place to land. And he found it. It's getting slippery. Second down, 10. Jaworski being chased. Being dropped, gets away. They're going to blow it down. He was in the grass of the tackle. Might have been John Bunning. We talked that they hadn't blitzed too much. I think Bunning came in that time. And Theismann is hot because he thought the whistle was blown too quickly. The grass, the in the grass rule in effect that time. I believe it was Bigfoot Harrison again. But this is the one quarterback I guess you don't want to have a quick whistle on. Let's pick it out. In the pocket. Here comes the trouble. John Bunny, linebacker. And it was number 95, Bunny. Third sack of the Redskins. I thought perhaps Theismann might have uh, a legitimate gripe on that last play, Brookie. There's a flag down with two seconds left in the quarter. The clock has run out. Five yards for delay of game is the official statement. Offense delay. Two seconds left in the third quarter in a game that started out sort of like a, a spaceship, and now it's beginning to get nasty. 13-9. Theismann. First half was all Washington. Theismann with a lot of time. Going intercepted by Ronell Young. The short man is going still on his feet. Inside the 40, and tackle there. The last play of the third quarter, and again, people are beginning to have shoving matches. Theismann made the tackle. Uh-oh. Flag is dropped. Let's see. It looks like it's against the Eagles. Joe likes it. the referee from Colorado he is Denver holding defense number 46 at the first down Herman Edwards, Herman Edwards detected for holding Meal doesn't like it tempers are flaring a 13-9 game. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, Washington 13, Eagles 9. Let's pause now for this from your local station. Ricky. Back at RFK Stadium. The rain is still coming down. Nobody has gone home. And for those of you that may have joined us late or whatever, the Redskins owned the game in the first half. A field goal, a touchdown, is 10-0. And the Eagles came out in the second half, and it is really a Donnybrook. It is 13-9 period action coming up, and Theismann's got the ball back. Handoff to Joe Washington. The Oakey. Oh, hit hard and drilled there by John Bunny. The time and the conditions. It is rainy. We're in the fourth period. There's little Joe. He injured a knee in preseason, Tommy. And one of the, one of the guys at the strike helped. Enabled him to come back. He came back last week and seen his second action of the season right now. He's not in there to block, Tom. No, I wouldn't think so at 182 pounds or so. In there to get the football. There's the clock, and there are the elements. It is raining. Theismann rolling to his right, throwing back, trying to get a screen. The Eagles read it. Now he's throwing it away. Joe Theismann very alertly saw the screen was being covered and threw it away. He wanted to go right to Washington on the screen. As we said, number 25 in there not to block. He set up like he was going to block on the pass, slipped out in the flat. Reggie Wilkes, number 51, the outside linebacker, making the start over on the right side for Philadelphia today, was right in Washington's lap, and Theismann had to go the option round. Don't be fooled about the Eagles being a one and two team. Uh, over the last four years, only two teams have won more football games in all of football, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys. This Philadelphia team's a good football team. in there. Washington's out. 
Third down. Tyson. Good throw. Say catches it at the 47-yard line. Bree Wilson was there. Tyson with plenty of time. He's got Harmon coming out of the backfield, but he was picked up nicely by the linebacker. He looks further downfield. Virgil Say against Bernard Wilson. And the little guy makes a good catch. That was only the second third down conversion by Theismann in the game. He's two of nine now. 13 of 24, 249 yards. Tremendous day for Joe. Washington's back in at tailback. Fumble. Lamaster on top of Theismann. It's a little slimy, huh? Even though they they do rotate the balls and constantly keep them rubbed off. Yeah, but I don't care how wet it gets, and, and, and they, it doesn't get that wet out there for this to happen. This is the third time today that this has happened. The, the snap is mishandled by the quarterback from the center. And you can you can do that in the shower, Tommy, and, and, and not fumble the ball. They're just coming out a little early on the center. In the shower, huh? You can. <laughs> Kyle Brookshire with Wayne Walker. We're in a shower, but we've got a heck of a football game. 12.54 left. Theismann back on second down and 11. Away from Washington, and it might be a good thing. Jerry Robinson was measuring number 25. Washington number 25, the little guy you're looking at, 5'10", 179, was this team's most valuable player last year as the Skins came back after a terrible 0-5 start. Finish up winning what their last eight ball games? Yeah, eleven out of their last what fourteen. Yeah. I saw the this team play the Cowboys a year ago, and until Joe got hurt and they took him out, they were playing Dallas dead even. And Dallas, of course, happens to be the team that, that these Redskins play next on CBS. Makes the catch. It'll be short of the first down. No catch. They're going to call it a trap for little Joe Washington. Working on the nickel defense. Washington outside. Runs a little cutout. Number 25, Dennis Devon comes over. He was in there on the nickel for the Eagles. And it's no catch. Redskin quarterback Theismann, I think, looks a little tentative on a couple of the throws now. He's being a little careful now. There's Hayes, Jeff Hayes, in the rain. All alone is Wally Henry back on the 15. For the Eagles. A high kick. It's a tough kick, end over end. Henry at the 19 and a half, gets to the 24. That is stacked up. 12 and a half minutes left. A 13-9 Washington we played in, right? They, they think that we played with loincloths. And round ball, huh? <laughs> First and 10. Jaworski, the quarterback, all the way. Toss back to Harrington. Perry Harrington, good blocking by Sizemore and cover. And a pickup of about five yards. Harrington with that low slung stride of his, a good accelerator. Kaufman made another tackle. We talked. You mentioned Sizemore on the block over there that time, Ricky, and Spagnola, number 88, who you see in the back of the huddle, did a good job. This is a key block on that outside linebacker, Kaufman. And although Kaufman did make the stop, Spagnola had him downfield. Watch number 88. There you see Sizemore outside of air to Spagnola kicking out on Kaufman. Has him downfield, gets him turned out. Good job by the tight end. Five-yard pickup. 11.49 left on the clock in the fourth period. Jaworski, two-step drop. Having to reload. Oh, good secondary receiver. Spike Nola at the 45. Boy, do you love it. Number seven just made a tremendous adjustment. He went to receiver number three on that one. Look at this, Brookie. Good protection. Nothing there. Two. Nothing there. Now let's go over the other side, and he's got Spagnola wide open across the middle. Well, Sid Gilman's worked a lot with Ron Jaworski, and Ron's worked a lot on himself. He's a very studious guy, and he's tough. First down toss back to Harrington. Oh, and he 
he has really ripped a great tackle on the outside. I believe it's Young Kaufman. I think it is. So we told you they were going nose to nose. We said that just a few plays ago. One time Spagnuolo won, one time Kaufman won. And that's the way it's going all the way down this line of scrimmage today. He's from Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. That's supposed to be sort of a lazy, laid-back lifestyle out there. He seems a little bit angry. He left his surfboard at home today, I'll guarantee you. He only weighed about 210 pounds last year. He's put on about 10 pounds to get up to 218 where he is now. I think the strike and all the negotiations are out of minds right now. I believe people are playing football again. Maybe we're watching it differently, too. 10.26 on the clock. Jaworski, one second down, 11. He's got pass protection. Dumps it over the middle. Caught by Spagnola. Spagnola short of the first down. He's to the 46-yard line. The second time today that Spagnola has made a shoestring catch on a Ron Jaworski throw. Spagnola delaying coming off the line of scrimmage. Sets up like he's going to slow block and then releases on inside and gets under the linebackers. The Yaley played like it was for the Ivy League championship. 9.41 left. Third down and two. This is a big, big play. Louis Jamona gets the first down. Down to the 42-yard line. Looked like he was tiptoeing through the tulips that time. Jaworski is 15 of 34 for 207 yards and had 55 and half. At 55. Sid Gilman must have gone in there with a the board. Good blocking up front. Good defense, too, which has gotten the ball back for the offense. Less than nine minutes left. Straight drive play off the left offensive tackle by Harrington. Dean making the tackle. Wilbur Montgomery, what a day he might have had. That's what everybody will speculate about. But the 49 guys you have are the ones that have to play it. And Harrington has done extremely well. The clock is ticking. The Eagles must win this football game. They are one and two. The Redskins are three and oh. is on, Candle, Jaworski, to Carmichael, almost to the 30-yard line. Couple of scores as the tension mounts here in Washington. Minnesota now on all cylinders, 28 to 7 in the fourth period over Chicago. They've scored 28 in a row. The Bears led it one time. New England over Houston as Ron Meyer goes back to the big star state. Right here, we've got a beaut. It's 13-9, first and 10, and seven and a half minutes left. Washington leads. The blitz is on. Oh, great diving catch by Harold Carmichael. Did he hold on to it? Jaworski throwing it outside. That's some catch. Coaches around the league uh, felt that last week when the players came off the strike, the thing that they saw the most was that little juggling of the football, either catching it and catching it on punt returns, that kind of thing. We haven't seen much of that today. That was juggled a little bit, but that was a fine catch by Carmichael. I always felt like Harold might drop a fairly easy-looking pattern, but I've seldom seen him drop one that is really a difficult catch, and that one was. Second down and one. Straight ahead, Harrington to the 15. The Eagles now loading up and coming straight off the, off the blocks. And a good job up front that time by Steve Kenny, the left guard, and Morris, the center, and Baker, the right guard. Yeah. 
Last year's game here, 15-13, Washington. One of the great comeback games you've ever seen. This year's game, almost the same blue, but more rain. It's 13-9. Less than six minutes left. The screen pattern. Did the easy catch. Did you say it? The good news for Dick Vermeil is that was on first down. How about the defensive line moving in the mud and all? Do they lose probably more traction than the offensive blockers? I would think the offensive linemen can sort of handle you after the ground's all chewed up and a little bit wet. Well, Ricky, we always felt that uh, the offense the offense lost their quickness on, on a field like this when you're up front. And, and if you can make a quick read and, and make a quick reactive move, perhaps you had the advantage. Good point. Here's that second down pin call. Jaworski, a long deep drop. He's got time. This ball is knocked away. It is intercepted on the one foot line, I believe. It is. Washington has the football. Murphy. the free safety of the Redskins called in a wobbler right at the goal line by Jaworski so he was hit and just a touch there but he threw a wobbler I thought perhaps he got a better shot than that to make the ball behave like that but nevertheless Mark Murphy number 29 has saved some points for the Redskins the man that runs the defense for the Eagles the best wherever he's been Marion Swamp Fox Campbell in the yellow slicker he has told those guys, if the Redskins get out of this hole, you don't go home on the bus to Philadelphia with the team. I'm just kidding, of course. First down and 10. The ball is on the one-foot line, if ever it was. Theismer. Sneaking for maybe a half yard. Eagles almost jumped. Theisman tried to draw him off that time with voice inflection, you could tell. 5.24, and the clock is running until now, maybe. Stopped at 5.19, it's still going. Everybody's saving timeouts. There's the Fox. That's Chuck Clausen on the headset to his left, or your right. It's knuckle down time. Second down, nine. Monk. He's got the first down. Roy Dell Young made the tackle, but Monk is a big, strong receiver. Pretty gutsy call, too, by Joe Gibbs and Theismann from down that deep in their own territory as he took it out to Art Monk, number 81, who has been their leading receiver this year. He's the guy we're talking about that reminds everyone so much of Charlie Taylor. In fact, Charlie said yesterday, he's my clone, number 81. <laughs> he is. They were both running backs in college, both big, strong guys, about 6'2", about 215, and you saw his power then after he made that catch getting the first down. You said a gutsy call by Joe Theismann. 4.13 on the clock, inside track, and Riggins comes out over the 15 to the 16-yard line. The tight end in motion came back inside and blocked. He did. That was Rick Walker. Watch number 88 in motion. That's the tight end. They use him just like an extra guard inside a lot of times on this tight end in motion offense of the Washington Redskins. You'll see him come in and double team on the nose tackle. Number 71, Ken Clark. Riggins held to 40 yards on 17 carries. Some ballpark filled with people still. Very few people have gone. Rolling to the right, Theismann tried to get back, being chased by Clark, and now he's dropped. John Bunny, number 95, Bigfoot Harrison, Clark. He had some, he had some company. Joe did. Might have been Dennis Harrison again. Let's take a look, Brookie. Roll out.
out right there, and it comes. The pressure comes from the backside right now. Here's Clark to kind of flush his Theismann out a little bit. And the initial hit is made by Dennis Harrison, who is playing this afternoon perhaps his best game of the season. You got to keep Theismann from getting beyond your perimeter, which Bigfoot Harrison did, and then Clark cut him off the pass, didn't he? Harmon's in there. Theismann straight drop back. Caught, almost intercepted and almost caught. Joe Washington, the intended receiver. Little Joe is not hurt. I think he's just trying to get his shoe on without getting his sock all filled with clay. And now the young kicker, Hayes, will be kicking from the end zone. Wally Henry, a man who has known a lot of pressure, will be accepting this punt. They've got a punt from a tight formation, Brookie, so their coverage on this will not be as good as normal. They've got to bring everybody in tight to block. Keeping the hands as warm as possible. Here's the snap. Oh, it's a good kick. Even got it to turn over in the rain at the 42-yard line. Henry into the Eagle bench inside the 40. 2.39 left. Three timeouts left. And an automatic one at the two-minute warning. Can the Eagles move that far, that fast? Your mind off what's happening, but don't forget, next Sunday, the CBS doubleheader all starts with the NFL today. Then the Vikings against Miami. St. Louis, the Cardinals, come to Philadelphia. Of course, the Eagles are locked in this battle now. They could care less about that. Dallas comes to Washington. Atlanta goes against Denver. Remember, Vermeil's teams have only won one game here in six shots at RFK Stadium. It is close. There are the numbers. Harrington, the only back behind Jaworski. Jaworski, his feet are set. Dumps it across the middle. It's Vito Cab. The Penn State rookie, the number three draft. It was hard to tell whether he got it before it hit the dirt or not. Another good catch by a Philadelphia tied end as Cab runs a pattern over the middle and he's wide open. You see him there at the left top, waving his arms. He wants it. Ball's a little bit low. He goes down and makes sure. You know Cab, the guy that Dick Vermeil says has good athletic ability. He could probably play a little fullback for him, he said, if, if, if he needed him. 241 pounds. And of course, Sampleton is the number two draft, the big tight end from Texas. This is a big chain movement here. It's first down, right? Makes the motion. 2.23 left. Three timeouts. A two-minute warning possibility. Jaworski is beginning to hum it. He's 18 of 40 for 232 yards. But the stats will mean nothing without the game. Toss to Harrington. The power play right. Spagnola and Sizemore out in front. Murphy making the tackle. Five yard pickup. Harrington carrying the load for the Eagles. Two minutes left. 13 9 Washington. He said the harder you work, the harder it is to surrender and give up. These two teams are at each other's throat now. There's no field goal possibility. That's out. Each team has three timeouts left. What do you think Eagles might do? Well, I think, you know, trickery is out. They've been running that sweep pretty well. If it was a good field, they could probably run a reverse off that, but they can't do that because of the footing. They're just going to have to go straight ahead. Nothing fancy. They'll throw it, but they can't put any trickery in the ball game. Second down, a long five. Jaworski back to throw. He's muddy field. He's being tackled and dropped by Dave Butts back on the 30-yard line. Butts is one of those guys that's lined up and, and, and come at you for 10 years. You'll see him to the right of Jaworski, working against number 63, Ron Baker. He just muscles up inside and comes over and makes the sack. 295 pounder, and he plays his position against the run as well as any. He doesn't get a lot of sacks. He had one and a half credited to him before he came into today's game, but that was a big one. 
for the Redskins. Now, the middle of the field where Jaworski tried to set up in is muddier than sort of the outside areas. And uh, I thought number seven's feet were already beginning to slide and all before uh, <laughs> butts arrived. They were. That's And that's what we talked about. It's even tough to, to roll out those kinds of things now on this field. You have to stay fairly basic. I know there are a lot of things that the Eagles would like to use and could use if they were on a good track right now. A reverse of some kind gets some people chasing too hard one way or another. Huh? Other scores. Buffalo beating Baltimore 20 to nothing. Cush still has his problems. Minnesota over Chicago. Big. You can hear the crowd. Big pro football's back. It's coming down. And sometimes it's more than a game. This is the kind of football game the Eagles must win. They are 1-2. and two. The Redskins are 3-0. Third down and 12. Shotgun snap. It's all right. Jaworski sets up. Carmichael can't reach it at the 16-yard line. Joe Lavender was there. A nickel defense with extra defensive backs in there, and that was Lavender nearby. We talked so many times, you really don't have to get a sack to bother the quarterback. Number 72, Dexter Manley, coming in from the left-hand side over here. Gets good penetration. Watch him bring Stan Walters right back into Jaworski's face. Had to throw over the top of him, and that could have obscured his vision. have two timeouts left now 152 on the clock and fourth down and 12 underthrown intercepted on the far side back to the 23 yard line by Tony Peters to help gets out to the 25 that's Riggins boy he's a good guy to have late in a game like this I don't think there's anyone in the league any better than he is at, at this point and doing what they want him to do right now second timeout Eagles burn one of their timeouts the defense will try to save one perhaps if they can should they be able to get the ball away from Washington and get the Eagle offense back out there the Eagle defense tell me might have to take a chance now and do some blitzing in there in this kind of situation. Hope perhaps that they can pop somebody through and get a hand on the football. Maybe uh, I don't think we're at the point where Thiesman will take the ball and drop to one knee yet. And they, so they will be risking a handoff perhaps unless he runs a quarterback sneak. But they're talking about that right now. And over on the other side, it's going through Marion Campbell's mind what he can do to get the ball turned back over as quickly as possible. There's the Swamp Fox. My old teammate. He used to pull all the big guys off of me. I'd always pick fights with large people because I figured they were not nice and gentle. There's one thirty. And number 78 will help me. Nobody can help anybody right now. The clock is being changed according to Ben Drive back to 145. 135. The clock in the stadium, which is supposed to be official, says 143, but... Referee Dreith is going to, let's see if he can, he hasn't gotten it changed up here, but the official one that they carry on the field has 135, I believe that's what he said. Second down seven. Inside track play by the motion man. Awful close, Riggins powers his way out there. Over the 30 yard line. That's the last timeout. You heard it. The last one. We can also say about the clock, Tom, I think that it is uh, totally non-functioning at this point in time, so the official time will be kept on the field, and we'll just have to guess along with them. 
you're thinking Washington, the clock would work right. The Pentagon's right across the street. <laughs> That's rather frightening. Right now, trying to make sure everybody knows. Coach Vermeil was notified. A big win for Washington. They would still be 4-0, or they would be 4-0, unbeaten. That's Gibson, Targuson, all the assistant coaches. The Eagles would be 1-3 should they not be able to get a touchdown in the last 143 and win this game. Everybody has thought at least five wins, maybe six to get there. One minute and 28 seconds left. 128 left and five games left in the regular season. No timeouts for Philadelphia. Boy, Theismann had some first half. Drive to the tailback. Riggins for the first down. The big fella gets the first down that they needed. Uh, so we said that no question who they're going to give it to at this point in the ball game. It was going to be number 44. They've got the first down. It was over on the right hand side beside behind the veteran George Stark at offensive tackle and Mark May, the young guard. Remember the Washington team got 10 of their 13 points in the first half. Minnesota 35 to 7 over Chicago. St. Louis beating Atlanta 23-20. Don't forget the Cardinals and the Eagles next week. Now Theismann's on his knee. Those games next week that CBS will have. Doubleheader, of course, the NFL today on Sunday. Minnesota, Miami. St. Louis against the Eagles. Dallas against these Washington Redskins right here where we are. Atlanta goes out to the Mile High City. 12.30 Eastern time, and of course it all begins with the NFL today. And the Cowboys and the Redskins, they have had some great ones over the years, Ooh. and this one's shaping up to be another. So perhaps they'll both be undefeated. Theismann back on one knee. Maybe the last one. Number seven is starting to shake hands with defensive linemen and all. The Redskins are 4 and 0. 13 to 9. There's Coach Dick Vermeil. He went over to tell Thiesman that he always thought he was a great quarterback. And of course he's right. Gibbs is looking for Coach Dick Vermeil. Two bright young people. Very sincere and very hard working. Went to the Super Bowl. And now they are one and three. Speed for the Redskins beating Philadelphia twice in this shortened season. Washington 13 to nine. Wayne, your reaction? Ricky, I just thought it was uh, one of the best football games I've seen in a long time in regards to the intensity on the field. And it, we, we, we talked to her that perhaps it uh, was a throwback to the old days. You certainly don't like to, to say that you played better football than you do now because that's not the point. They, <laughs> they are better athletes and they do play better. But it was one of those caveman struggles where it was just get after it from, from the minute <laughs> the, they kicked off. It was You look down there and, and uh, they were blowing steam at each other the whole game across that line of scrimmage and really coming after. It was a very enjoyable game. I know a tough loss for the Eagles, but uh, the Redskins... Uh, 4-0 now, certainly uh, on their way to the playoffs. They played, uh, I think they played five of their last six games, or at least four out of their last six games at home here at Washington. So uh, unless they do a total fold, uh, they're certainly in that, uh, that one of eight playoff. And of course, uh, they open on the road for their other three games, the two and then the strike and then the one, against playoff teams of a year ago, and the Redskins have, have survived it, and they've won. So the carryover from last year, even though nobody admits there is one, 